Hey everyone, welcome to PlatformCon 2023. My name is James Willits and my talk today is going to be about implementing a developer platform in an enterprise level organization. So just a bit about me, I'm a principal software engineer currently working for SAP Concur based in the UK. Um, I'm also an online instructor, so I teach quite a few different technical software courses on sites like Udemy, YouTube, and a few other platforms as well. Um, I'm also a bit of a YouTuber as well. I like to make videos on platform engineering and other tutorials on software concepts and things like that. So on to our talk today, the agenda for our talk, I'm basically going to cover three different topics. I'm basically going to first of all talk about some of the challenges that we've experienced when it comes to implementing our platform engineering project, particularly at an enterprise organization. I'm also then going to talk about some of our solutions to those challenges. And there is one solution in particular that I'm really going to focus on for this presentation. One thing that I think is absolutely key to implementing platform engineering in an enterprise organization. So do look out for that. I'm also going to take a little bit of time as well towards the end just to talk about some of the KPIs that we're using to track our success for our platform engineering project. So let's get right into it. So I'm going to talk a bit about some of the challenges that we've experienced when building out our IDP for our enterprise organization. So the first challenge that we've come across, and I'm sure you know many people have come across this as well, is where do we even begin? Like we've got so many areas that we can focus on, so many things that we can do in platform engineering, so many things that we can change. Where exactly do we begin? So for us in our organization, you know, we've got hundreds and hundreds of different microservices that we've built out over the years. These are all running in production, you know, at various levels and, you know, they're all very critical. They all talk to different different services and systems. So again, you know, they've all got their own challenges and problems. And so the first problem that we have is, you know, where do we actually begin with these services? So our services, you know, we're a geo-located company. So we've got, you know, offices located all over the world. So teams and services, et cetera, are located all over the the world so again you know it, it can be a challenge to pull together the information from all of the different teams and to fight to figure out what is important to each team so again you know we want to really try and the first thing that we wanted to do was to identify what the biggest pain points were for the teams where we can deliver the most value straight away the other challenges that, that we've immediately run into are the huge number of different tech stacks that we support in our company or that you know teams have implemented so in the start, you know, in the beginning, when we first moved over to a microservice infrastructure or a microservice architecture, I should say, all of the development teams were, you know, empowered to, to adopt, to write code in whichever language that they felt was most, was most suitable to their use case that they were trying to solve. So initially, you know, this worked out really, really well. Um, it, you know, it gave teams a lot of flexibility in the code that they could write. They could write code, you know, that fitted in with, say, the skill set that they had in their team and what they felt that they could support. So, you know, that had worked really well in the past. But, you know, as time has gone on and as we've grown more and more services, of, as new developers have left and rejoined the organization, we're kind of in a position now where we've got tons and tons of different services all running in different technology stacks. Some are running in Java, some in Python, some in Go, you know, and all different frameworks. And it's kind of now got to a point where, you know, we're here, we have so much, so many different tech stacks, so much overhead and burden from DevOps tasks. Now having all of these, you know, having all of these different languages and texts has kind of become more of a hindrance where at the start it was probably more of a benefit. The other big challenge that we faced and our challenge number three is our documentation. So again, I'm sure anyone that works in an enterprise organization can probably relate to this as well. So our documentation is kind of scattered all over the place. You know, we have some documentation in Confluence, some in, you know, just like in tools like Jira, some of it's in Slack, some of it's in GitHub pages, but it really is kind of like, you know, all over the place. Um, and there's no real standards to our documentation either. So some teams, you know, follow certain standards, some follow another. Some teams have great documentation. Some teams, you know, their documentation could be improved. But, you know, it's there's, there's quite a range of different documentation. This is it's quite difficult to, in some cases, to track down where the documentation is for a particular microservice. We've noticed that this is a particular challenge as well when it comes to onboarding new starters or when it comes to onboarding a new service, for example. That's when we really feel the pain of, you know, having to go and 
ask around for where the documentation is and get things updated, et cetera, as well. So that's a key thing that we really want to try and solve in our platform engineering project is the is the documentation. So to summarize, the three challenges that we've really that we've really come across in our enterprise, where do we start with platform engineering? How do we support so many different tech stacks and how do we fix our documentation? So let's start at the beginning where we go through, where do we start? So just starting out in our team, when we formed our platform engineering team, we formed a team, you know, of obviously key developers, principal engineers, et cetera. The thing that we really invested in that's really made a difference though is to have dedicated product owners in our team. So we know from doing research and from seeing how other organizations have built out their platform, it's so important to have dedicated product owners. We really want to treat our platform as, you know, as another service. It's, as, it's a service that has customers and the customers are the other developers. As such, we, we knew straight away that we needed to have dedicated product owners that could help you know define the stories to engage with engage with our customers and determine what was going to be important to build out so again once we had our team formed and we have our product owners the next thing to do was to go and find out you know figure out what it is that we were going to build so to do this we sent out a lot of different surveys to the various different teams just to get an idea of you know the different technology stacks they were using what pain points they were experiencing what things we could potentially do to kind of help them out as well we also went for a lot of deep dive technical sessions with these teams as well so following the feedback from the surveys we actually took time to meet with all of the different teams again with our product owners and the other engineers just to go through you know what technology people are using how we can help etc and to just form a really really clear picture of you know what it is that we need to do and what we need to implement in our platform to help our customers who are the developers so from that we then built out our roadmap and we've kind of built out the roadmap in three distinct different stages so the first thing that we started with in phase one was just a proof of concept so a proof of concept of our platform so what we did for this is that we just chose a very small subset of features to implement initially and for those features as well, we only targeted those to very, very specific services. So instead of opening up the platform to, you know, for everybody to just adopt right away, we said, no, we're just going to build out a very POC style project, a small number of features and target this to just a few, few services. Moving into phase two in the middle, we then moved into our what we call our MVP phase. So in this phase, we then expand on the features and we, you know, we continue to grow out to continue to mature and develop the features that we implemented in phase one in the POC. And we also now start to target more services to onboard then as well. As we go on into phase three and beyond, this is what we call our release phases. And so here, what, what we do is we take the features that we've built out in the POC and the MVP, and we start to harden out those features as well. What we want to do at this phase as well is that we want to encourage other teams to adopt our, adopt, our, adopt the features that we've built out. So in the POC and in the MVP phase, we've been very heavily focused on helping teams to board. You know, the platform team would often do a lot of help with the onboarding, with the onboarding of the different features. But then as we moved into R1 and beyond, we really want to encourage teams to have a self-service model, if you like, to so be able to just read for our documentation and then onboard themselves to the features features that we're building out. So that was how we started and that was where, how we formed you know, our roadmap. That was how we went, went through our first challenge. The next challenge that we had, which was probably our biggest one, which was how do we support so many different tech stacks? So the things that we came up with here, which has been the absolute key thing for our success in our enterprise is to develop what's called a fellowship program within our, within our platform engineering organization. So the way that the fellowship program works is basically we basically recruit engineers from across the organization. So we, you know, we have our, our teams are spread all around the world, lots of geolocations, lots of different engineers with different backgrounds and experiences. What we do is we put out an advert for engineers to join the platform engineering team fellowship and they join for a period typically of three to six months. So when those engineers come into the team, the first thing that they do is that they, they learn a bit about platform engineering, they learn a bit about what our mission is, and they learn about, you know, some of the features that we're currently working on, um, you know, just to get an idea of what it is that we're doing. We then have those fellowship engineers then build, help to build out those features. So under the guidance of some of the principles that we have in our team, these, these engineers inside our fellowship, they actually help to build out the actual features of the platform. 
Once they've done that, then those engineers then take those features and then they help to integrate them back into the services that they've come from. So a team will come from, you know, a, a different area in the organization that, that will have, you know, typically a handful of different microservices. So then the features that these engineers, the engineers in the fellowship have actually built out, they'll actually take those features back to back to their service, essentially. Once they've done that, then the fellowship engineers will then typically demo their work. They'll demo it, you know, either inside um, the organization that they came from or to the wider org as well. So that gives them really good exposure and experience. So again, we've had huge success with this fellowship approach. And so just to go over a few of the different benefits for this. The first thing is that, you know, it's brought together engineers from across the org. Again, you know, at SAP Conquer, we're a very big organization. We have teams that, you know, do largely work in silos some of the time. So it's really brought together engineers with lots of different backgrounds and skill sets. And it's something that's worked really well. It's also given those engineers an opportunity to come together and work on, you know, a new technology or a new language, et cetera. So again, that's that's worked out really well. It's helped with buy-in of, you know, and the adoption of the platform features. So by by those engineers then being able to take those features back to their team, that's really helped with buy-in for platform engine for our platform engineering um, project as well. It's helped to foster a kind of community as well. So, you know, by coming into our fellowship, getting, um, you know, a few months of experience, again, they, they feel part of the community, the engineers that have come in. And again, that's helped to, to really grow that out. <clears throat> Excuse me, and that's helped to encourage ongoing contributions into our platform as well. So ongoing pull requests, pull requests, et cetera, continue to come in from engineers that have been part of the fellowship. The next thing to call out is our documentation portal. So again, you know, what we really wanted to build out was a central documentation portal. So for this, you know, we decided on, we just went along with a, a static site generator just to do that. And again, the fellowship participants play a key role in updating this documentation as well. So we have lots of our different features in our platform. It's got various documentation that needs to be updated. So as part of our definition of done within the platform engineering team, we actually have it as part of the definition of done that the engineers actually go and write the documentation that lives in the portal for the other customers there as well. So just before I went, just before I finish, I just wanted to talk about some of the key KPIs that we're using just to measure our success in the projects. So the first thing that we're tracking is just simply the adoption figures. So the number of teams that have adopted our different services. Again, this gives us an idea of you know how successful we're being, how many teams are onboarding. Um, we also track as well the amount of time that developers are spending on things like ops tasks as well. So we use do this by just sending out simple surveys, just to seeing you know how much time. Just to get a gauge of how much time developers are spending on ops. And we also try and track this through JIRA as well. So just adding different JIRA labels for ops. And we kind of measure this before and after the platform engineering features are adopted. Also, a heavy goal of ours is to reduce production incidents as well. And so again, we track the number of production incidents that occur in the meantime to resolution, things like that. We track that for before and after, um, before and after the features of our platform have been adopted. So just to run up, wrap up, the big key for our success has really been our fellowship program. That's been, you know, the key success. And I would argue that's the key. It's absolutely key for an enterprise level organization, particularly if, you know, with like some of the staffing challenges that are going on at the moment, bringing in engineers from across the org and their different skills and backgrounds has been fundamental to our success. It's really helped with our adoption of our platform in terms of building out our community as well. And it's really encouraged, you know, the ongoing contributions and really built up that spirit of platform engineering and making contributions that can then be shared widely across the organization. So yeah, that's everything um, for our, my talk today. Um, I'll certainly be around in the Slack channel. I'd love to hear from you if you had any questions, if you had any feedback, I'd love to chat for you. But if not, I'll look forward to chatting to you soon. Thanks very much. Bye.